next guest tonight has appeared in numerous films, including Eight Men Out and Roommates. Now, starting uh, today, you can see him in Spawn. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome D.B. Sweeney. <laughs> Hey, thanks for coming back. Good to Thank have you, you on. Oh, it's a thrill. The, uh, the, this movie, uh, Spawn, uh, we, were, we were checking it out the other day because Martin Sheen was, was on from the movie. This yes. has got amazing special effects. It's, it's blowing right up. You know, that's how I got into it because the guys who did it, the director and the producer and the special effects guy, were all uh, the guys who did Fire in the Sky, the sequence I did there where I got abducted. Mm -hmm. So we all became pals and they told me we're doing this movie Spawn someday and we'd like you to be in it. And I said, that's fine. I'll do movies someday too and I'd like you to be in them. So, uh, <laughs> you know, have another cup of coffee. So, uh, uh -huh. so anyway, four or five years later, they came along and they said, we're doing it. Come on. So uh, it, it's sort of like the inmates running the asylum. These guys never made their own movie. And uh, it's blowing up. It looks like it's going to be a big hit. And uh, I've noticed, like, the, the lead character, Spawn himself, he's covered in all kinds of, like... Uh, oh, yeah, him. Uh, Michael Jai White, the guy who played Tyson on HBO, he's this international mm -hmm. martial arts champion. Anyway, he's, he's, like, three and a half hours of makeup every day. John I thought he said Jaleel White at first. No, they tried to get him, but he wasn't oh, available. It's like, yeah, yeah. Urkel as Spawn. Yeah, he's, <laughs> I, he held out for the cash. They decided, you know... <laughs> Go with another guy. That's right. But, okay. uh, John Leguizamo plays Clown, who's a four-foot-tall, obese mutant from hell. Clown. Who's a clown. Who's yeah. a clown. So yeah. it's pretty much all the negatives you could possibly have. <laughs> right. And, uh, so, and so he was in makeup about four and a half hours. So, you know, it was, these guys really did a lot of work. And, what kind of, do you have to go through a lot of makeup and stuff? Uh... No, I just showed up late. <laughs> you know, I had a cup of coffee. I spent about three weeks working real hard on a goatee. <laughs> Which, uh, was That's very how labor. long it would take me, probably. Yeah, if I was labor. on steroids, too, I'd get a little goatee. And then it would fall out. Uh, the, uh, I understand uh, you're into something uh, that's kind of, this intrigues me. Because I, I hear about people doing it, and it always sounds, uh, you know, kind of insanely uh, reckless. But that you bought into a racehorse, or you own part of a racehorse? Yeah, two, two of, of them. them. Yeah, I always buy the rear half, because I figure that, <laughs> yeah. that represents the value of my investment. But, um, uh -huh. but the first horse I bought was called Phone Prince, and I got upset because it's... Called what? Phone, you know, like phone, phone Prince. Oh, okay. I thought that's a really... That's a reasonably stupid name, but it's not a stupid enough name to ensure success, because I'm pretty convinced that the horse with the stupidest name generally wins the race. <laughs> and so the horse went out and ran like five races and came in second and fourth and fifth and then had a serious knee injury and was out for a year. And my partners were really frustrated, and they finally agreed, let's change the name of the horse. And I said, well, great, I got the name. We'll call it the, the horse formerly known as Phone Prince. <laughs> and, uh, Nice so, change. Uh, has, it, has it helped? Has it, uh, he blew out the other knee and we had to kill it. <laughs> no, that's not true. No, that's not true. They have an adoption <laughs> service. See, I actually the audience the, is like, oh my oh, God. What a cruel son of a... Yeah. But I took the needle right up to his head. It was very painless and it was... Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. dogs Andy, have get to him eat. with your needle. Yeah. <laughs> dogs have to eat? <laughs> what? No, it's... Don't I love how it. that's how you save yeah. it. Hey, dogs have to eat. <laughs> and I, you know, I haven't learned much from this job, but animal euthanasia doesn't go over. <laughs> doesn't fly. No, no. Right. No, no. Oh, and don't make fun of the don't make fun of the fat the, people either. Yeah. They don't like that. Actually, uh, that's my next place. We're not gonna. <laughs> your big hunk on fat no, people I, I, and swimming I, pools. I, yeah. did, I, I took a skydiving lesson because I, I've always wanted to skydive, but I didn't want to be that guy like out all night gambling in Vegas and let's go skydiving. And then you know you get the guy who's like Randy Quaid in Independence Day, and the plane crashes, and you were the guy that went skydiving in Vegas, so I figured I'm going to go with the military, and I made friends with these guys. You went skydiving with the military? Well, some of these guys I know are Navy SEALs, and I went with them with, where they go to the civilian How do you places. know Navy SEALs? I mean, they just well, appeared in your swimming pool one day? <laughs> <laughs> hey, D.B. Sweeney, come on, we're going to blow up a boat. <laughs> Pretty close, you know, I was just, I was in a restaurant, I met these guys, friends of friends, and we just started hanging out. I told them I always wanted to skydive, so they took me. And although it was a civilian plane, there was like five Navy SEALs who were going to go on their 800th and their 900th jump and everything. I was on my first. They make you go through this four-hour class. And uh, I'm not going to take your advice here, Andy, but there were these two really fat girls in the class with me. And, and a horse. And a horse. <laughs> <laughs> You're so screwed now. I'm done. Yeah. You know. No, really, they were, they, uh, yeah, well, they, well, they were not athletic, let's put it that way, right? And so, and all you have to do to get out of this, you got to learn how to fall down. Like, you basically have two guys holding on to you as you jump out of the plane, and, they, and if you snap or have, go into a nervous breakdown, they pull the chute and you're fine. Okay. But when you get to the bottom, you got to know how to land your feet on the ground and then fall so that your butt hits and then your shoulder. They couldn't do it. 
in the room, like in the class. They couldn't make their butt hit before their shoulders. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, if they let these girls go on the plane and jump, I know there's no fear of death. There's nothing to worry about because you can't get hurt. If they're letting them do it, it's sure. Safe. I mean, and they, they certified these women? They let them go. And they went up there. So I'm coming out of the plane. I'm like, you know, how do we make this more difficult? So I went and talked to my SEAL buddies. Why do you want to make it more difficult? Well, I mean, why do you skydive? You know, I mean, you know, you go on a roller coaster because there's a little slim chance that maybe you might die. Yeah. Right? yeah. Skydiving. Sure. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is wait a minute, wait a minute. No, that's not why people go on a... They, they like the sensation of going up and down. If someone said, now Conan, there's a slim chance you're gonna die. You're out? I'm at the cotton candy machine, oh. yeah. <laughs> Sitting on a stool. Oh, oh. No, I'm, I'm not gonna... <laughs> I don't want any part of that. Well, I guess it works on a lot of levels for different people. Okay, but, but you me, want, you like the slam want, chance. Yeah, I want that I want to sit in the back where maybe there's a piece of metal coming over, you know. I mean, that's where, you know, that's where you want to be, you know. And they say you got to wear the helmet and the gloves and everything, and they're serious about it. That's a ride that I want to be on. Right. So with skydiving, once they let these girls jump out of the plane, I wasn't scared. So I talked to the Navy SEALs, and they said, well, we're going to jump at night with black parachutes and scuba gear on. I said, I'm in. So, you and I are so completely different. That's, that's amazing. I don't say I'm into that. That's when I start backing out of the room and crying, you know? <laughs> but you, uh, you put... So why black parachutes? Well, just in case anybody's gonna try to shoot at you while you're up there. Then. <laughs> Did you ask friends of yours to take shots? No, and... I just... <laughs> I thought... If you do me a favor, it would add so much fun. If you would take this shotgun and try and peg me oh, as I I'm coming thought, down. You know, since they know I want to make it more dangerous, I thought they might go to the next level without asking me. Sure, you know, okay, because, uh, <laughs> right. You know. So you got the black parachute and you're wearing a scuba gear. Yeah, and the mask and everything. You dive into the water and you got to get rid of your parachute and then you scuba. Well, then you don't, if you're diving into the water, you don't worry about butt first, then shoulder. You're in water. Well, water so why don't the fat girls go in the water? They really... <laughs> I gotta get on the phone with these people. Yeah. Yeah. This training course is all wrong. Learn their names so, first, yeah. though. I don't really say, I want to speak to the fat girls, please. They don't like they're that. They're not athletic. I don't know if we can okay. really say they're fat. Okay, good. We can't when they now. go to french fries, they don't say small, medium, or large. They say all of them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, wait a minute. It's all fiction. Come on. I think what he just said was wrong. I think I was right. Nobody. So, uh, so what happened? You did it and you go in the water? No, I'm waiting to do that. That's coming oh, up Oh, you haven't next. done that no, yet? That one's, that's Are you going to try and, and go in an area where there are a lot of sharks or something? Or I'm just trying to keep it a secret from my producers on my TV show. That's right. You've got to be insured yeah. or something. Well, and at this point, they don't bother. You know, it's basically like we're just hoping they'll show. Yeah, no one would give you insurance. No, I can't. I, I'm not uh, what, what are the, the TV show, let's talk about that. It's called C-16. Yeah, it's uh, C-16 FBI. It's on uh, another network at 8 o'clock on Saturday night. And uh, starts You can September say 20. the other network. We're big I about re things. I can't here. remember which one it oh. is. Actually. <laughs> um, I, it's, That's all right. It's, well, then. Uh, uh, there's so many of them now. <laughs> There's a new one every day. And I don't read the contract. Yeah, so, you know. okay, that's fine. Uh, uh, but C-16. Uh, C what, uh, what is C-16? It's, well, FBI names their units like the bank robbery units like C-9. And This is all wrong, but this is an example. And like, you know... Uh, yeah, because you don't want to give out the real yeah, code. Yeah, that's the first episode. Because once people know yeah. the code... <laughs> What's the point? But like, you know, so they named, and C-16 means like the major case squad. We're like the all-star guys. So like if they have a big case, they call us and we come in with our cameras and our grittiness. And, and, and is that fun to be shooting that stuff? I think it'd be fun to, to shoot it's, it is with really like FBI equipment and stuff. Well, they gave me a badge, which was a big mistake. You know, they gave me an FBI credential, <laughs> which was something they might have rethought, you know, if they had to go back. And, and we were shooting at the airport. The first episode was going on September 20th. And I heard there was a bomb scare on a plane coming in from the Far East. And I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. I probably ought to investigate that. <laughs> so, uh, so I went down to the, uh, where the people were coming off the plane, and I, I, I cross-examined pretty much everybody off the plane. Hi, D.B. Sweeney, FBI. Listen, I want to ask you a couple questions about the meal service. Did you, did you have the fish? <laughs> did you finish it? We're, and did you, and we're, people were like, oh, yeah, I did. It was good, but I didn't eat all of it. And, you know, you show people a credential. It's unbelievable. That's so, so amazing. So you walked around for a while and we're doing this freaking people out. about 45 people and then airport security came and sort of advised me not to continue. You know, it's funny. I can relate to this. When I first got out to Los Angeles, I was working on a TV show called Not Necessarily the News. And one day they cast me, G.Y., to play the Irish cop, you know. Uh, and, and they put, they gave me a policeman's uniform. And, you know, you're waiting around for a while to, to do your line and stuff. Nothing's happened. So I walked across the street and went into a Denny's and just started, like, move, telling people to move it along, you know. <laughs> It was really fun. I was like, move along now. Let's go now there, son. All right now. Stop standing still. Let's go there, son. People were like, hey, Irish cop, better move along. Gotta get going. Yeah. yeah.
It was fun, though. Put a uniform oh, in. A lot of power. You know, they give you a rubber gun and a fake badge, and all of a sudden you're Kojak. <laughs> so, I mean, it's... A rubber gun. Yeah. And then see, this. hey, how come there's like a suction cup dart? <laughs> The tip of your gun. It's not the close-up gun. Uh, Tal, just you mentioned it before, but um, when you did uh, Fire in the Sky, uh, which is a movie about UFO alien abduction, yeah. that has become such a hot thing right now. I know. That I was curious. Are you getting those kind of people approaching you <coughs> and well, asking it's you tough. about it? It's tough. You go to a restaurant or something or a bar, and I guess for some reason because I made this movie, it's like I must know something. So I got people coming up to me, and they're like, DB, you know what? I was abducted, too. <laughs> And I'm like, listen, it was a movie. I wasn't abducted. I don't know anything. The check cleared, and I'm here now. <laughs> so, you know. Do you believe in that stuff? No. You know what? Like, there was a survey that said, like, something like 4% of the people in America say they've been abducted. You yeah. know, I got a little advice for the aliens. You abduct any more people, keep them. We don't want to hear it. Okay? Just keep them. Find a use for them, graze them, raise them as cattle, whatever you need to do. Don't send them back. Because they talk they, about they it. They talk about it on Geraldo. You know. <laughs> oh, man. We've made so many friends tonight, you we and saw, I. Yeah, we have <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> is there anybody left? No, but come back if there is. Uh, Spawn is uh, at theaters now, and C-16 FBI is this fall on ABC. Uh, you've been hilarious uh, both times you've been on the show. I hope you come back. Thank You're you so much. You're a lot of fun to talk Thanks to. DB Sweeney, everybody. Patrice O'Neill, very funny guys coming up. We'll be right back.